Hello, Hilton Baptist. Welcome to another week of devotions where we are thinking about what we're looking at on Sunday, and that is how we come out of lockdown into the new normal that our world has become. What lessons can we learn from the people of Israel when they came out of exile? Uh, remember that they were sent into exile for 70 years, living in Babylon, forced out of the land, and then God raised up King Cyrus, who sent them back to Jerusalem and allowed them and helped them to rebuild the temple. Well, it resulted in a brand new era of life for the people of Israel, and there are lots of lessons to be learned from how they did it, what they did, what their strengths were, what their weaknesses were. And we're going to learn some of those lessons over the next few weeks. On Sunday, we looked at what we can learn from Ezra. Ezra was a religious leader. He uh, was quite a significant leader, probably in the Babylonian government. And he was sent to Jerusalem specifically to help the people of Israel who were struggling in Jerusalem. And we learned quite a lot from him. We learned uh, how to overcome the problem of disappointment because uh, the temple wasn't what it was. The, old, the new temple was not as good as the old one. We learned about how to deal with opposition because opposition came along and the Jews were forced to stop their building for 14 years because of external opposition to what they were doing. Largely, that opposition was built around lies, but it still had a devastating effect, although not a final effect, because eventually the temple was built. But the third and probably most serious uh, challenge that the people of Israel had to deal with was the temptation to compromise. And we looked at that through uh, Ezra chapter 9, and uh, we're going to follow on a little bit today looking at Ezra chapter 10. So the big problem that Ezra discovered when he got back to Jerusalem was that, that there was intermarriage um, of the Jewish people. Some of the Jewish men had married um, local wives, uh, foreign wives who were not Jewish. They were probably Samaritan um, and they were not followers of Yahweh like the people of Israel were. And this was damaging and compromising uh, the witness of the Jews in Jerusalem and could have had a devastating effect over the time because it could have removed their, their distinction and that which made them separate and identified them as God's people. We learned on Sunday that Ezra just sat and wept and then prayed the most amazing prayer of repentance. And I want us to think a little bit about how the people responded to that. Firstly, just consider for a moment how it is that compromise raises its head when the opportunity to do something new, to go back and um, the freedom of oppre from oppression is over. Why does compromise review itself? I mean, think about it. The people of Israel were sent away from the land for 70 years into exile in Babylon because of their rebellion against God, because of what they had done against the Lord. And now they go back to Jerusalem. He miraculously allows and enables them to go back. And they're starting to do the same things again. But no wonder Ezra was really angry. But I think we have to take stock of the fact that compromise is a very real issue when trying to rebuild our lives, when trying to go back to a, a, a more normal lifestyle. I think there's lots of reasons for that. I think there's lots of stress when we go back to normal. And if I think of, of many of the people coming out of lockdown in South Africa, we are all stressed out just to try and survive. And that can lead us to compromise. One of our stresses, if not the major one, is economic. We don't have as much money as we used to have. And that is a huge problem for us. And, and so there's a temptation to compromise. There's a temptation maybe to cheat, is it? To, to put yourself into partnership with people you know who are not, not healthy and godly, and all those kind of difficulties and challenges that come along the way. So what can we do about it? Well, the people of Israel, on hearing and realizing that they had sinned against the Lord, were decisive in their repentance. Those who had married foreign wives divorced them. They actually did it. And some of them had had children by these wives. And I'm sure they made sure those, those women and children were well looked after. 
but they separated themselves off from them. Now, in the New Testament, we're told that if we find ourselves married to an unbelieving wife or husband, then we are not to divorce. We, there's no need to divorce. Uh, we shouldn't marry such people in the first place, but if we find ourselves married to someone who doesn't believe, there's no need to divorce. So the specific issue is actually different in the Christian church. But I, I think that the significance of how strong their repentance was is important to us. I think we are very good at saying sorry. We are very good at, good at saying we made a mistake, we're sorry, we'll try not to do it again. But the people of Israel actually acted on their feelings of sorrow. And we're not so good at that. And so I think that's the great challenge that lies before us today. God is calling us to repent. And that means to change our behavior to stop doing the things that are compromising our faith, to stop doing that which is leading us from the Lord and to do the right thing and to do it in practice. And so I'm just going to give you one example of how this might be and this may or may not be relevant to you. And if it is, may the Lord speak to you. Don't listen to it because I'm saying, listen to it because of what the Lord says. Some of us might have been tempted to not pay our domestic workers during the lockdown. They couldn't work for us, so we don't pay them. And I want to say that if that's you, that I think that that is really harsh and not right. And I think a way of repenting now that the lockdown is over is not just to re-employ our domestic workers and to start paying them again, but actually to pay them back for the money that we should have paid to them when they weren't able to work but we were able to pay them because we were receiving a salary. Of course, you need to work the details out, and they might be different for your situation, but I think that the Lord is calling us to that kind of action at this time. May God bless you as you think through the implications of a practical and active repentance if you're compromising your faith. Amen.